All right, hey, what's up guys? Gratuitous from itsgratuitous.com. In this video, I want to talk about the plugin database and how I organize and set it up. Okay, so the plugin database is newer to FL Studio and it's so powerful. I really, really like it. It allows us as the user to totally customize our plugins and the menus. So if I just load up FL Studio, for example, if we right click, you can see insert. So it allows us to customize this however we like. As you can see, I don't use many plugins. Uh, it's about workflow for me. So like, you know, most of the plugins I use for instruments is like right here. These are very high quality um, plugins, tons and tons of sounds. I would never run out of sounds to use, all right? Now for our effects, you can see that we also, uh, I have also organized it this way, but you can see in the plugin database, and I'm gonna break down how it works, how to organize it, um, okay? So let's open up effects. So what I personally do is I create a folder inside of the effects folder and I create a folder inside of the generators folder. I said my generators, my effects. Because by default, when you first install FL Studio, it creates all the different folders. And I definitely based my folder structure off of what they gave us. I really liked it. But what was happening was I went through all the folders. I organize them, right? I started removing plugins, adding plugins in. And then when I updated FL Studio, it added plugins all back in and it like it ruined my organization, which took time. And so I thought to myself, I was like, how can I figure out a way to keep myself organized and be able to, you know, update FL Studio easy as well as transfer computers easy. And this is what I have um, figured out over the years. And it's been really good. So again, you guys can do your own thing, but this is what I do. I really, really like it. So again, I create a folder called my effects. I create a folder called my generators. Now this folder right here is what I would store in the cloud. It allows me to, to access this folder from any computer really easily. It allows it to be backed up. And so if we open it, you can see that it's effects and generators. Okay, just like uh, the plugin database. So we have the plugin database, which is where we're in. You have effects and generators and installed. So if you don't know what the difference of these are, that's okay. The installed is where we pull plugins from. We don't touch the installed. The installed is, is like all the different plugins that you have available to you, depending on if you hit F10 or go to your settings up here, you go to file and you go to plugins right here. Okay, you select this and uh, you get a big window. Uh, I have my windows all kind of uh, zoomed in, makes it easier to see. But so this is your uh, plugin manager and you can add and remove folders from here and everything in here is all the different plugins that FL Studio, uh, yeah, that FL Studio sees on your computer. And so that all goes into the installed folder. Okay. Again, we're not touching the installed. We just pull from the installed. So it's the effects and the generators, which FL Studio allows us as the user to set up and customize however we want. I'm just creating a folder inside of that folder and I create my own folder structure and it works really good because look, insert, see my generators, which is right here. So drums, instruments, samplers, drums, instruments, samplers, right? Um, and that's the same thing right here. Drums, instruments, samplers, okay? Now, when we add a plugin into the database and I'll show you how to do that in just a second, uh, I'm gonna go to an easier one because I know it doesn't have as many in there. So when we add a plugin into the plugin database, uh, FL Studio adds three files, okay? It adds an FST, it adds an NFO, and it adds a PNG file. And that's it, okay? So how do we add a plugin into the plugin database? So my suggestion to you, if you wanna follow this organization uh, strategy, is you wanna create your own uh, folder that you're keeping backed up. I just create effects, generators, and then I go my effects and my generators. And then all I have to do is I just have to drag this folder into where FL Studio stores the plugin database, which I'll show you in just a second, okay? And then I just create a folder structure, all right? And then FL Studio is able to see this folder structure, okay? You're even able to create folders within folders. So as you can see, we're in the delay folder. We have chorus, flanger, phaser. We come up here to effects, delay, see, chorus, flanger, phaser right so these are plugins i use very often and as you can see i do use a lot of fl studio plugins but as you can see i do use some third-party plugins uh it, if you are going to be using third-party plugins i always tell you make sure that you're backing them up properly 
make sure that you actually do like and enjoy them and that you use them often. Otherwise, you know, you're always going to have to keep these plugins around with you. Okay. So for example, like, let's say we want to add a plugin into like the course folder. Okay. So how I do it is you go effects. We're going to go to delay. You go to chorus. Let's just say uh, we want this classic clipper in course for some reason. You're going to come up here. You're going to go add to plugin database. Okay. And it added it into chorus. And you're going to see when I press OK, it'll be right there. Okay. And just to let you know that if the song was playing, so if you hit spacebar, the song's playing, and the, you know you have the meters all moving, so it looks cooler. You could just click here and go add to plugin database, and it would take a picture of the meters and stuff. For example, I'll show you on the EQ. See, I took a picture like this because it just looked cooler. Um, okay, but let's go back to this delay. And now, if you're going to delete a plugin, I would not suggest go right click and delete because it still keeps um, it still keeps some files. So you actually want to go into the folder structure, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so let's just minimize this. And so I have two folders open. Okay, we have the image line plugin database folder. And we have documents. So this is where FL Studio stores your plugin database. So I uh, think Windows and Mac, same thing. You just go to documents, go to image line. You're going to go to FL Studio. You're going to go to, I believe it's presets. And there is plugin database. Okay. So again, it's that same layout effects generators, which is what we as the user are allowed to set up and customize. Don't touch the installed. Uh, now, again, the one on the left here, this is what I keep backed up. Okay, so for example, I just added in that T Rex Classic Clipper. So, again, my effects, right? So, we go into effects or generators. So, my generators, my effects. This is where I create my folder structure. And in delay, inside a chorus, you can see the T Rex Classic Clipper. So, this is what's going to happen if we just right click and delete the Classic Clipper. So, you can see it still leaves stuff behind. So we are going to just delete those. But this is the plugin database that FL Studio pulls from. And within all the folder structure I showed you, inside the plugin database, so again, if you were to just install FL Studio blank just today, you know, fresh install, you go to effects, it's going to have all its folders all organized for you. But again, in my opinion, it's all about workflow. So you want to set up this, you know, your effects the way, you know, all the effect plugins that you are using all the time. All right. And so that is why I, so let's say I, I delete this, which I will. Okay. So watch this. We're going to come here into FL Studio and it's all gone. So I'm clicking nothing. If I click on generators, so that's still there and that's not there. Okay. And so I'll walk you through how I do this because um, it'll help you out. All right, so this right here, this folder is from here. This is the backup. I keep it in the cloud. And this I keep organized. These are all the, the plugins I use all the time. I've already gone through. I have came in, into FL Studio. If we have a plugin open, if I right click and go add to plugin database, that's how we're adding it in. And so once I've figured out all my plugins that I like to use, it, it takes time. And that's why I've um, set it up this way is because when you install and I, and for a while when you would update FL Studio, they would keep adding files in and it would mess with the organization. So by creating your own folder, I just found that FL Studio doesn't touch any of your organization. You can remove their stuff. And if an update does come, if they add new plugins, you can try them out. If you like them, you can add them into your own structure. But doing it this way, it just allows you just to be transparent. So again, effects, there's nothing in it right now because I just deleted it. So this is how I would do it. Let's say I just installed FL Studio on this computer. Inside the plugin database in effects, you're going to have different folders that they have created you can remove those because again we're in effects the installed don't touch but the generators and the effects within your documents uh, image line fl studio presets plugin database you can delete all those and i'm just going to right click copy here and that should be good but sometimes you get this you get duplicated images which i'm hoping it does do good okay and so what the problem here is 
and don't worry, like this is really, really easy. Okay. It's much easier than, um, having to always reorganize. So you can see what the problem is, is that these are now hit, um, not hidden. And I already created a video on this. It's more in depth, but I'll show you quickly in this video how to fix this. Okay. So let me just repeat that. So what's happening now is you can see I have duplicates of everything and I don't really have duplicates. It's just the one with the flower. That is the PNG file. And if we right click it and if we go properties, you can see it's not hidden. So if I were to go, or sorry, right now I'm on delay. So let's go to the EQ and uh, we will do uh, the Pro Q3, okay? So right click, properties, hidden, apply, and this will immediately be updated, okay? So this is gonna look cleaner, but there's a way to go through through the command line and it's actually really, really easy, all right? I even wrote an article and again, I created a separate video on this, uh, but we just write in a command and what we tell that command to do is go through all of these folders for us, find all the PNG files and hide them. And it's it's like two lines and I have it on my website and I'm gonna show you in this video for convenience, okay? So again, we are in the plugin database here and we are in effects, okay? So I'm just gonna highlight effects here and I'm pressing control and C to copy that or you can right click and go copy. This way you don't have to type in anything this copies the path for you. And so just uh, hit the start button, uh, type in CMD, and this is your command prompt. You can right click up here and go properties and you can customize it. I always like to have a little bit of transparency, kind of makes it look a little bit cooler. And so we're gonna type CD and I'm just going to uh, use the quotations because if there is ever a space like FL Studio, uh, sometimes some things don't work. So if you just wrap it in quotation marks, it's just saying change directory to this path. All right, so I'm gonna hit enter and you're gonna see it goes right there. So all we have to do now is just go a trib and we want, so the star is the wild card. It means it doesn't matter what the title is. We just wanna grab all PNG files, okay? We wanna hide it. That's what the plus H is. And we are going to go uh, S because that's gonna go through every single one of these folders for us and it's gonna hide them, okay? So let's go to the dynamics. And as soon as I hit enter, you're gonna see that all of these have gone away and now it's nice and clean. All right, so it takes just a second there, but there you go. Nice and clean, okay? So now we have to do the same thing to the generators. So if you go uh, CD dot dot, it goes back. Um, and now you can see we're in the plugin database. You can go CD and if you hit tab, it allows you to go through your folders. You can see we're in uh, generators, uh, installed effects. So, I and again, this is the command line. It's not as intense as what you think. Um, essentially, we're right here right now in the structure, okay? Because if you look at the path, um, we're in the plugin database. So I just want to go to the generators, okay? And then if you hit up on your arrow keys, it goes to the previous ones you've already typed. And so I already wrote this, you know, command. And if I hit enter again, um, so I'll show you that quickly. So again, nice and clean, but we only did it for the effects. So we have to do it again for the generators. And this is just taking a while because I'm explaining it, but this would probably take me five, 10 minutes to do in a new install. Once FL Studio is installed on that computer, I never have to touch this again. Now, if I ever purchase a new plugin or add a new plugin in or something like that, I would just do it into this folder, right? This is my main folder that's in the cloud. This is my, you know, this, these are my plugins. These are what I use all the time. And I just make sure that this gets dragged over to whatever computer I'm using. It allows all my computers to be using the same plugins, a great workflow. Okay. So let's open up FL Studio again. And it looks like these ones are all hidden. So it doesn't look like, like I, oh yeah, I didn't delete it. I deleted the effects one in the beginning. Um, Okay, so again, there's even little shortcuts I showed you in the command line. So just a quick recap. So the plugin database allows us to 
customize our workflow and organization in FL Studio. I always tell you guys that organization is like number one as a beat maker. It's all about workflow, speed, knowing how to get, you know, um, your ideas out of your head as fast as possible, okay? Um, so if you guys want to learn more about FL Studio, you guys should check out my FL Studio Beginners course. I also have an FL Studio Beginners book. The Beginners book is on Amazon as well if you would like the paperback. Um, and uh, if you guys ever have questions, you guys can just leave comments below. So this is how I organize the plugin database. Again, my whole reason for it was because the, the plugin database is newer to FL Studio. Uh, when FL, when you first install FL Studio, they create all their folders, which is good, you know, nice and organized. But what happened to me was I went through and I removed plugins that, you know, or, or added and removed, and it allowed me to create my own folder structure using their structure that they gave you. When I updated FL Studio, uh, they added plugins back. So it was just a huge mess of plugins that I use and then plugins that I didn't want to use. So I found by creating your own folder within their folder, if you update FL Studio, they don't touch it. So it allows your structure to stay the same. If they do add sounds, again, you can look through and decide, do, do you want to use those sounds or like, you know, uh, effects or generators? If you do, well, again, you can add them by... Uh, Let's just open up a plugin. And again, you can add them by going to add to plugin database, right? Um, and then again, you can always come to the plugin database. This is the easiest way to organize. All right. So within my effects, you can see my effects is right here. So we have controller delay, right? Uh, if you want to create subfolders, you can do that. Um, but creating it here, all your folder structure is by far the easiest. And then when you want to add your plugin in, well, then, yeah, you just open it up. You go add to plugin database, but then you're going to come back here. And this is where, like, you, you know, if you want to drag this somewhere, again, you got to drag all three. And that PNG has to be hidden, which I showed you in the command line um, how to hide. And if you want more information, I created a dedicated video on how to hide the PNG files. Um, and that's it. Okay, so thank you. And uh, visit the website, it'sgratuitous.com if you guys would like to learn FL Studio with me.